there are something like 90 described epistogramma species now, and at least 50 that do not have a name yet. So other than Crinicicla, maybe this is the cichlid genus with the most species. Today I want to look at some habitats where these fish occur, even if that is difficult because these small cichlids are so widespread in South America and they can be found in a variety of habitats, ranging from shallow creeks where there's barely any water movement and leaf litter right up to the surface to the main branches of major rivers. This first habitat is the famous Caño de Cristales in the Macarena region of Colombia. This is right up against the foothills of the Andes and you would not always expect to see Epistogramma here, but Epistogramma alacrina is abundant. They can be found in this slow moving river, but also in some of the nearby rapids where it lives alongside Chetostoma joropo in very fast flowing water. You can see in this habitat they are very common, and you can find adult males usually around 2 meters or 6 feet apart. They will spar a bit when the neighbor crosses into their territory, but generally they stay in their own area. Females and younger fish will swim in and out of the territories of several males. The bedrock here is overgrown with algae and sponges, and the epistogramma pick at the microinvertebrates living in the substrate. To breed, females usually select a place along the margins where roots of the riparian plants and some of the aquatic plants give them cover. Down in the floodplain of the Orinoco, in the Llanos region, you can find Epistogramma vieta and Epistogramma hongsloi. This region is quite dynamic because most of it is dry for much of the year and then floods when the rainy season begins. At that time, many fish from the Orinoco and other large rivers get into these permanent lagoons to breed. The epistogram are here year-round, in the permanent bodies of water, and they will usually breed in the dry season when the water is warmer and there are less large fish in the area. Further downstream, near the mouth of the Orinoco in Venezuela, is where Epistogramma guttata is found. This region is a dangerous place for the last 10 years, and that is why we see very few fish exported from here. In the aquarium, Epistogramma guttata is quite easy to breed, but of course not very common. Most of these higher-bodied, larger species of Epistogramma need an aquarium of at least 100 liters or 35 gallons, with plenty of cover along the bottom, and some spawning caves for the females. I'm not a fan of broken flower pots or PVC in the aquarium, so I use these small Carniaria legalis pods or suva pods. They are the ideal size for breeding these small cichlids. As long as the fish get some decent food, they will breed within a few weeks after arrival. It's important not to have any fish that eat the babies in the tank, so I usually just add some Corydoras or an Anostomus. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to this channel. We have lots of new videos coming up. We have five more minutes of Epistogramma alacrina in their habitat. Uh, stay on to have a look.